What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be starting our Python tutorial series. Now I am extremely excited for this series. We're going to be walking through all the things that you need to know to get started in Python. We'll be looking at variables, data types, for loops, while loops, operators, and a ton more. After this beginner series, we're gonna be going into another set of series where we look at pandas, matplotlib, seaborn, web scraping, and more. Now in this video, we're just gonna be setting up our environment to where we can learn Python in future videos. In this series, we're gonna be using Jupyter Notebooks for all of our tutorials because I feel like it's a really great place to learn the basics, but then in future videos, I'll show you different IDEs that you can use for your Python code. I genuinely cannot wait to get started on this series. I absolutely love Python. So without further ado, let's jump on my screen. I'm gonna show you how to install Jupyter Notebooks. All right, so let's get started by downloading Anaconda. Anaconda is an open source distribution of Python and R products. So within Anaconda is our Jupyter Notebooks as well as a lot of other things, but we're gonna be using it for our Jupyter Notebooks. So let's go right down here. And if I hit download, it's gonna download for me because I'm on Windows. But if you want additional installers, if you're running on Mac or Linux, then you can get those all right here. Now, if you are running on Windows, just make sure to check your system to see if it's a 32-bit or a 64. You can go into your About and your system settings to find that information. I'm gonna click on this 64-bit. It's gonna pop up on my screen right here, and I'm gonna click Save. Now it's gonna start downloading it. It says it could take a little while, but honestly, it's gonna take probably about two to three minutes, and then we'll get going. Now that it's done, I'm just gonna click on it, and it's gonna pull up this window right here. We are just going to click next because we want to install it. This is our license agreement. You can read through this if you would like. I will not. I'm just going to click I agree. Now we can select our installation type and you can either select it for just me or if you have multiple admin or users on one laptop, you can do that as well. For me, it's just me. So I'm going to use this one as it recommends. Now it's going to show you where it's installing it on your computer. This is the actual file path. It's gonna take about 3.5 gigs of space. I have plenty of space, but make sure you have enough space. And then once you do, you can come right over here to next. And now we can do some advanced options. We can add Anaconda 3 to my path environment variable. And when you're using Python, you typically have a default path with whatever your Python IDE or notebook that you're using. I use a lot of Visual Studio code, so if I do this, I'm worried it might mess something up, so I am not gonna do this. It also says it doesn't recommend it. Again, messing with these paths is kind of something that you might wanna do once you know more about Python, so I don't really recommend you having this checked. We can also register Anaconda 3 as my default Python 3.9. You can do this one, and I'm gonna keep it this way just so I have the exact same settings as you do. So let's go ahead and click Install. And now it is going to actually install this on your computer. Now, once that's complete, we can hit next. And now we're gonna hit next again. And finally, we're gonna hit finish. But if you want to, you can have this tutorial and this getting started with Anaconda. I don't want either of them because I don't need them. But if you would like to have those, keep those checked and you can get those. Let's click finish. Now let's go down and we're gonna search for Anaconda. And I'll say Anaconda Navigator. And we're gonna click on that. And it should open up for us. So this is what you should be seeing on your screen. This is the Anaconda Navigator. And this is where that distribution of Python and R is going to be. So we have a lot of different options in here and some of them may look familiar. We have things like Visual Studio Code, Spider, RStudio, and then right up here, we have our Jupyter Notebooks. And this is what we're gonna be using throughout our tutorials. So let's go ahead and click on Launch. And this is what should kind of pop up on your screen. Now I've been using this a lot. Um, so I have a ton of notebooks and files in here, but if you are just now seeing this, it might be completely blank or just have some, you know, default folders in here. But this is where we're gonna open up a new Jupyter notebook where we can write code and all the things that we're gonna be learning in future tutorials. And you can use this area to save things and create folders and organize everything. If you already have some notebooks from previous projects or something, you can upload them here. But what we're gonna do is go right to this new we're gonna click on the drop down, and we're gonna open up a Python 3 kernel. And so we're gonna open this up right here. Now right here is where we're gonna be spending 99% of our time in future videos. This is where we're gonna write all of our code. So right here is a cell, and this is where we can type things. So I can say print, I can do the famous hello world. 
and then I'll run that by clicking shift enter. And this is where all of our code is going to go. These are called cells. So each one of these are a cell and we have a ton of stuff up here and I'm going to get to that in just a second. But one thing I wanted to show you is that you don't only have to write code here. You can also do something called markdown. And so markdown is its own kind of, you could say language, but um, it's just a different way of writing, especially with a notebook. So all we're going to do is do this little hashtag and actually I think it's a pound sign, but I'm going to call it hashtag. Uh, we're going to do that. And we're going to say first notebook. And then if I run that, we have our first notebook and we can make little comments and little notes like that, that don't actually run any code. They just kind of organize things for us. And I'm going to do that in a lot of our future videos. So just wanted to show you how to do that. Now let's look right up here. A lot of these things are pretty important. Uh, one of the first things that's really important is actually saving this. So let's say we wanted to change the title to, I'm going to do AAA because I want it to be at the beginning. Um, so I can show you this. I'm going to do AAA new notebook and I'm going to rename it. And then I'm going to save that. So if I go right back over here, you can see AAA new notebook. That green means that it's currently running. And when I say running, I mean right up here. And if we wanted to, we'd go ahead and shut that down, which means it wouldn't run the code anymore. And then we'd have to run up a new cluster. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I didn't plan on doing that, but let's do it. So we have no notebooks running. And right here it says we have a dead kernel. So this was our Python 3 kernel. And now since I stopped it, it's no longer processing anything. So let's go ahead and say, try restarting now. And it says kernel is ready. So it's back up and running and we're good to go. The next thing is this button right here. Now this is an insert cell below. So if I have a lot of code, I know I'm going to be writing. I can click a lot of that. And I often do that because I just don't like having to do that all the time. So I make a bunch of cells just so I can use them. You can also delete cells. So say we have some code here, we'll say here, and we have code here. And then we have this empty cell right here. We can just get rid of that by doing this cut selected cells. We can also copy selected cells. So if I hit copy selected cells, then I can go right here and say paste selected cells. And as you can see, it pasted that exact same cell. You can also move this up and down. So I can actually take this one and say I wanted it in this location. I can take this cell and move it up or I can move it down. And that's just an easy way to kind of organize it instead of having to like copy this and moving it right down here and pasting it. You can just take this cell and move it up, which is really nice. Now, earlier when I ran this code right here, I hit shift enter. You can also run and it'll run the cell below. So you can hit run and it works properly. If you're running a script and it's taking forever and it's not working properly, at least it's you don't think it's working properly, you can stop that by doing this interrupt the kernel right here. And anything you're trying to do within this kernel, if it's just not working properly, it'll stop it. You can restart it. And then you can try fixing your code. You can also hit this button if you want to restart your kernel. And this button, if you want to restart the kernel and then rerun the entire notebook. As we talked about just a second ago, we have our code and our markdown code. We're not going to talk about either of these because we're not going to use that throughout the entire series. The next thing that I want to show you is right up here. If you open this file, we can create a new notebook. We can open an existing notebook. We can copy it, save it, rename it, all that good stuff. We can also edit it. So a lot of these things that we were talking about, you can cut the cells and copy the cells using these shortcuts if you would like to. We also go to view and you can toggle a lot of these things if you would like to, which just means it'll show it or not show it depending on what you want. So if we toggle this toolbar, it'll take away the toolbar for us. Or if we go back and we toggle the toolbar, we can bring it back. We can also insert a few different things like inserting a cell above or a cell below. So instead of saying this plus button, you can just say A or B, routing above or below. We also have the cell in which we can run our cells or run all of them or all above or all below. And then we have our kernels right here, which we were talking about earlier, where we can interrupt it and restart those. There are widgets. We're not going to be looking at any widgets in this series, but if it's something you're interested in, you can definitely do that. And then we have help. So if you are looking for some help on any of these things, especially some of these references, which are really nice, you can use those and you can also edit your own keyboard shortcuts. And now that we walk through all of that, you now have Anaconda and Jupyter Notebooks installed on your computer. In future videos, this is where we're going to be writing all of our Python code. So be sure to check those out so we can learn Python together. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you were able to get everything installed correctly. I am super excited for this series ahead of us. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below. And I will see you in the next video.